Our eye this morning, uh, the NHS has created a 1.3 billion compensation pot for claims made by people who should have had operations or who have become more unhealthy as a result of the COVID restrictions. Lucy, very good morning to you. Good morning, yes, good to see you. Yeah, good to so see this you. This is uh, really, uh, yeah, uh, we've got a lot of excess deaths uh, now. We have, they've been running higher, higher than, uh, uh, or as high as pandemic levels of excess mm. deaths, but they're not COVID related, most of them. Uh, only a small percentage of them are COVID related. Um, it was something many people warned about. Mm. I think you were probably one of them for a long time. If you tell people to stay at home, if you effectively cut down uh, non-COVID uh, work, then this is uh, one of the legacies. Mm. And uh, I'm afraid we're seeing the consequences. So the numbers are running um, something like in, in a month, uh, one week in October, uh, 16 over 16% above the five-year average of excess deaths. That's about it was about 1,500 excess deaths a week, and they're still higher mm. than the five-year average. It's yes. still up. And the NHS appears to be sort of girding its loins, if you like, getting ready for a load of claims coming in, which could range from anything from clinical negligence to um, just missed appointments to loved ones um, dying as a result of, of NHS kind of... Um, NHS's inability to treat them. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of open-ended, this. It could go on forever. It could, and indeed it's uh, at a time when we are facing uh, crippling waiting lists. Uh, we're coming into winter, so we're seeing a surge in respiratory viruses, as we always do, including flu. Mm. We've got the nurses uh, going on strike. We've got other parts of you know hospital staff also threatening to strike. Um, it really needs to, you know, we've had five health secretaries and we need to actually look at the roots of some of these problems and get underneath them. And, and no one seems to be doing that. No. It seems a lot of firefighting and uh, headline, headline grabbing, you know, pots of money here and pots of money there. But actually, we need to get get the health service by the roots and actually look at new restructuring it and reforming yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, I know it seems a very long time ago now, but I, I seem to remember back in the dark uh, sort of history, historical past, uh, Rishi Sunak was Chancellor and he was promising to raise uh, national insurance in order to cut down on the backlog. Everybody seems to have forgotten about that now. Well, I mean, interestingly, there's a recent report uh, for uh, from the I think the Institute of Fiscal Studies, which uh, has found that the putting more money into the NHS hasn't led to a reduction in backlog. So they're not they're, they've got more money to treat, but then they're treating less people. Mm. So um, I'm not sure that just throwing money at this is actually going to help. The NHS is not functioning. Uh, I know there's been calls recently uh, from a number of people, a, a lot of um, consultants and people I speak to sort of can't speak out. Mm. There's a lot of censorship. But um, there are a number of people that do believe the NHS should go back to seven-day working. Yeah. Disease doesn't recognise the weekends or, or, or bank holidays. Um, and that's one of the things, you know, it, it kind of stops the flow uh, if you get ill at the weekend, you know you're mm. probably about 11% more likely to die. And um, you're losing a lot of capacity by not working at weekends. So that's just one thing that could be done. But, of mm. course, um, the doctors don't want to do that. Well, no, they don't. And we hear constantly that, uh, you know, it's all the Tories' fault, it's the government's fault. But I keep saying to people, yeah, but surely the people that run the NHS should bear some responsibility for how the NHS is run. And now we've got two strike days supposedly coming up in December, which are hardly, <coughs> hardly going to be helpful, are they? Well, no. I mean... I'm, you know, it's very worrying and worrying that we're going to, there are talks about drafting in the army mm. to deal with um, emergencies. I mean, the army are trained in certain things, but not to do complex diagnostic work. So that's not really a solution. Um, and I think that it, it could be a good idea that the NHS does have more control mm. over how it runs itself. There are so many layers and there's so much top-down control. The government is trying to organise the NHS, always putting on new targets, mm. new 
rules and and uh, restrictions and you know new new sort of aims. But actually, it could be argued that the NHS actually needs more independence mm. to work out how it needs to run itself. So, I mean, it's a complex area, but um, there are a number of things. You know, for for one thing. The IT system, there have been successive governments which have tried to make that work and so that GPs, hospitals, pharmacies can all talk to each other, but it hasn't. And no one's really put in enough money to make that mm. run smoothly. Um, social care, you know, that's not joined to the NHS. The NHS is a golden goose, isn't it? It always gets more money. But uh, looking after people, which is a huge part of it, I think we've got something like 25% of beds up to that much are taken up by people who are fit to leave but have nowhere to go mm. um, because there's no care for them in the community. So it's it's complex, but just throwing bits of money in and money for compensation claims is really not going to cut it, I don't think. No, I don't think so. And I hear a lot of people, particularly community-based people, saying that, you know, the old cottage hospitals were a good idea. They were all kind of done away with the local... Um, a, a sort of aspect of NHS care has disappeared and an awful lot of people are having to go to big centralised hospitals and hubs and all of that. And maybe that was a mistake. and Maybe they could go back to the, the you know, the more localised way of treating people. Well, I think you've got a really good point there. And in fact, as we come into winter, we're going to have a lot of older people, vulnerable people, that will need just a little bit of care while they get over flus and other sort of infections they don't need the high-tech hospital beds that we've got and i've got you know speaking to to various experts um it's estimated uh we need about 150 sort of low-tech hospital beds to get us through the winter and that would be a good idea but as 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 we said earlier you know we've got five health secretaries over two years my line's cut oh well well we can still see you I oh, know we can't. Uh, she's we just lost her. Uh, uh, don't worry, Lucy. Thank I, you. Are oh, you back? There you go. Yeah, sorry, I'm not sure what happened there, but anyway, five secretaries in in two years. Um, it's uh, you know n no one's really looking to to look at the roots mm. of this. It's just the headline grabbing. Yeah. No, absolutely right. Listen, Lucy, good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Sorry about the missing line there for a couple of moments. Lucy Johnson, Health and Social Affairs Editor at the Sunday Express. Once again, you know, we talk about the NHS practically every week on this show, sometimes practically every day. Uh, but we're now reaching a new level of crisis because not only is there a strike coming, not only are there supposedly not enough nurses or doctors, but now uh, the NHS is setting aside over £1 billion. It could be uh, 1.3, possibly £1.5 billion to pay people off who are going to sue them over negligence because of COVID restrictions and because of the fact that many of their loved ones actually lost their lives due to NHS policy. And as Lucy said, I was one of the people uh, who was saying that this would be a problem.